Hello, welcome back to your new lesson. Let's first create a new MATLAB file. So here, we I'm going to show you how you can analyze FFT of a mini cosine signal. So let's create a file named as FFT of mini cos dot m. And uh, here I'll show you multiple cos signals. And in that multiple cos signals, I'll also draw the power spectrum of those cos signals. So as in the previous tutorial, I had shown you with the same parameter as fs, t, l and small t. Small t is a time vector. So after the basic parameter setting, so let's create a first signal x1 is equal to cos 2 pi ft. And uh, the first f will be 50 hertz and then multiplied by t that is a time vector. And then now let's get x2. So the x2 is a second signal, it is cos 2 into pi into 150 and then multiplied by t. And in the same way, we are going to get here our third signal. The third signal x3 which is equal to cos 2 pi into 400 dot t. So here the frequency is 50, 150 and 400 hertz for these three signals. Now we are going to get uh, these signals x1, x2 and x3 can connected into a single signal that is x. And then after this I am going to plot this signal x into, um, into a subplot, right? a single figure and there will be a three subplot. And for that I have to write here a for loop i equal to 1 to 3 and then the subplot 3 that means 3 row 1 column and the ith location is the 1 so in the sub in the first subplot i am going to plot x1 and the, for that i'll only take first 100 values so plot t from 1 to 100 and then plot x i i means the first that is x1 and it will be plotted from 1 to 100 value only and the title of this uh, you know the title of this uh, subplot will be row and uh, you know then I'm going to convert that i into a string so the num to str is used there and then row 1 first it will print the row 1 then it will iterate it will print row 2 and the row 3 so the row 1 in the time domain and then row 2 in the time domain then row 3 in the time domain so let's run it so once we run this application I think uh, here you see the first row, row 1 in the time domain, row 2 in the time domain and then row 3 time domain. And you see the corresponding frequency is very high there. Now after this, I am going to do FFT of all these three signals one by one. So first I will do FFT of x1, then x2, then x3. Right? But in the meantime, I can do FFT of all these three signals together, which will be used just by a GX. So one more thing I would like to tell you here, FFT is always done into factor of 2 power. So let's get that N first, N is number of points FFT, N is equal to 2 power next power of 2 of L. Here you notice if L is 1000, but with this method N will be equal to 1024, which is a perfect square of 2, right, which is a, which is a power of 2. Right, and then the dim 2 will tell that it will perform, it will perform, uh, you know, um, row wise, okay, row wise 50 into the data. So, you know, the x is uh, 3 rows and 1000 columns, then y equal to the 50, x, n, and then dimension 2, that's mean it will perform uh, 50 throughout the row. Now, we are going to get here the power spectrum. P2 is equal to the ABS Y by L that is power spectrum and then I'm going to get only the first half of our power spectrum so that is a P1 is equal to P2 and it will take all the rows that's mean for X1, X2 and the X3 and then it will get only half of the power so it is it will take from 1 to N by 2 only plus 1 and then after that I'm going to you know uh, write a for loop here so in that for loop, I'll plot these three uh, subplots together. 
So for i equal to 1 to 3 and then subplot 3 comma 1 and then comma i and then I am going to plot this FFT and of course I have to create a new figure otherwise this FFT will be plotted on the previous you know the data data plot. So the plot here plot this uh, you know first I have to also set here a frequency vector so frequency will start from the 0 and then the frequency resolution frequency resolution is always equal to fs divided by number of points fft so n here is number of fft points so fs divided by n so it will increase into step size of fs divided by n and it will go until fs by 2 minus the frequency resolution which is fs divided by n and then it will read the p1 which is first power spectrum just run it now you will see here first figure and the second figure so in the first figure we have our signal which has a frequency content of 50 hertz 150 and the 400 hertz now here you can verify it into figure 2 but the frequency content is exactly the same as in the figure 1 so this is all about in this tutorial how I have shown you how you can plot a 50 of multiple signals together by concatenating that into a single